All right, everybody, welcome back to another video lesson. We're going from zero to producer in 90 days with Ableton Live. I'm your instructor, Torbjorn. Big thanks to Ableton for extending that free trial out to 90 days. Ableton Live 10 Suite. While we're all in quarantine, we can stay creative and stay productive. Let's do a quick review. Last video was all about composing and arranging. We finished our beat, basically the composition and song form of it. We layered and changed a bunch of different sounds, extended our drops so that they were twice as long, did a bunch of stuff like adding sprinkles, which is unique things that only happen once or twice, automation of effects for our sound design stuff, and a few other tricks. Here comes our sprinkle, our little breakdown. Change the sound up in the second half. All right, let's fast forward a little bit and hear our second drop. Switched it up for a trap drop. Break it down. Change the note. Added a little arpeggiator. And then we get our normal ending again. So the reason that this video is titled sound design and mixing is because we're getting to the point here as intermediate level producers where we need to start improvising our techniques more. The tried and true techniques that we've been learning about in our last videos are kind of now a standard. There's something that you've probably noticed that I use all the time in these videos since we've learned them. But the thing is that those techniques pretty much only get us to like the 80% complete mark. So for creative ideas that are going to be needed for that last 20%, that might not be stuff that comes to us right away. It might mean that we need to continue to listen critically for sound design ideas, even though we're going to be moving on into mixing. And it also means that we might have to, after mixing, go back and change some stuff as we listen to our song a little bit more in the car or with some of our friends or get feedback from our producer peers that you may be talking to on Instagram, Discord, Facebook, etc. So the highest level producers often make multiple different versions of their songs as we continue to come up with clever ways to refine our work. So don't feel like you have to come up with these ideas all at once before you move on, but kind of keep that in the back of your mind that those options are still open and it's still okay for us to go back and change stuff about the arrangement or the sound design for that matter. All right, we're going to quickly go through and mix this thing. Again, this is just a uh, demo version of this, so we're not necessarily pulling out all of the stops on the mixing just yet, but what we are going to need to do first is enhance 
saturate OTT on some individual sounds. So I'm going to just go down the list and do that. Starting here with our toms. Probably put a little saturator there. And we can probably eight and get rid of the bass. Let's leave the drums until last because we're going to have to ungroup our drum rack. Let's move on to the Already sounds pretty crispy. I'm going to just put an OTT on there. Try to monoize with my side control EQ8 settings. To get rid of some of the stereo high-end information. Cushion stuff sometimes is a little easy that way. We've already got this chorus on our sticks here. Let's see what an OTT does. Definitely brings out some of the room sound, which I love, but it also brings out a lot of the mid-range, which I don't Bikes here. So let's grab much cleaner. That sounds great. All right, moving on to the djembe. It was interesting because the uh, rhythm of it was kind of a polyrhythm with our kick and snare. Drum bus has something cool. Punchy driven. That I like about that is it makes that transient a lot more prominent. Kind of gets rid of some of that ringing sound. Dial it back somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. Sounds okay. Is uh, electronic music after all? So OTT like almost always sounds good. Not sure why it shouldn't. It's over compressing everything. Same thing, just get rid of some of that low end from our side signal. It's okay if it stays at all. We can always go through here. I'm doing this thing called mid-side EQ instead of stereo. Basically means that the signal that's in the middle, that both speakers are playing the same, uh, we can control that different from the stuff that's just on the outside. Just for uh, simplicity's sake, I'll just keep using the stereo mode. Do another video to talk a little bit about mid-side stuff. Something like that, maybe. All right, moving on to the dub percussion. Pretty bright sounding already, but I think we definitely can make that feel uh, a little closer to us with a saturator. I feel like it's already pretty compressed, so the OTT might not do a whole lot here. Yeah, I'm going to lose the OTT. It seems like it just brings out a lot of the low end and the mids. Uh, so we'll just throw an EQ on here. We'll put this back into stereo mode. Get rid of the low end. Something around 4K. Maybe we can back off those frequencies a tiny bit. Tighten up this Q. Probably okay. Let's hear the tambourine now. That one, we're just going to do the old OTT. Oh, I don't know. To be honest, I think it, I think it sounds better without it. Maybe a saturator or maybe an overdrive would be nice. We can kind of dial in exactly what frequencies we want to accentuate. Bring out some of this high end. Maybe we'll do the same thing here with the EQ8 to just clean it up and make it a little more mono. Also, cutting out our low end, or our bass, kicking our sub. Awesome. Bit of sub. Here's our wobble. Throw an EQ at the end there. Put that back in stereo mode and see what it does. Feeling like we can reduce some of these harmonics here. It's just feeling a little mid-rangey. Something like that might just help clean it up just to make sure that we Feel like we're hearing the uh, bass and the sub more prominently than all the gritty distorted stuff. This sub here, this wobble, excuse me. All right, let's check out what's going on here. Yeah, this is a great example of that. You can see we get all these big spikes, but our like sub 
on that one needs a big boost. This kind of back off some of the other stuff. Like so extra to do this on two EQs, but I feel like that's a little definitely feels better. Once we do our uh, pick noise mixing here towards the end, we'll be able to dial that in a little bit better. All right, same kind of thing here on this wobble. We're going to have to treat sub and the low end a little bit. Well, maybe it's just those two spikes that needed a little pull down. Better already. All right, let's move on to the 808s. We're basically like all uh, pretty much just EQing this stuff. If it's like a bass, um, we're going to let all of the low end go through. If it's not, we're going to low cut, or sometimes that's called high pass. And if it's like feels like it's just not punchy enough or not aggressive enough, like a lot of those drum sounds did, then that's when we add the saturators, the OTTs, compressors, all that kind of stuff. This 808 feels totally fine. Let's move on to the second one. I'm uh, pulling up the wrong plug in here. All right, I'm going to leave that one alone for now. Let's move on to our arpeggiator. I think we can definitely get a little bit more out of that with a saturator, especially after the reverb. Really just push that into the distortion, OTT it. And because we're doing this after the reverb and after the delay, it's like accentuating those sounds. So I think we can pull our delay mix down a little bit. It's okay. Definitely don't need all of that low end. Add up. Do a little dip here. Seems like we got some build up around 1 to 2K. So we can pull a little bit of that out with an EQ. Feels all right. Now let's check our 808 fill. Get a little drive out of that with a saturator. Multi-band dynamics might be a little bit too much. Looks like that whole thing is in mono, so. We're actually pitching that 808 up so high that we don't need all of that sub in there. You can see that fundamental spike is between 1 and 200 hertz. So we're actually going to low cut that, which is uncommon. Uh, let's take a look now at the horns. Only a couple sounds left, and then we're going to pink noise mix this thing. We're going to do our last couple techniques here on the list, and uh, we'll be good to go. We've got reverb on this from Ascend. This one already feels very distorted, so I don't really want to do too much to this. It's actually like a very close sound to what I was looking for when we first picked it. So I think I'm just going to get rid of the bass. A little bit of these low mids here. Not too much, just because getting rid of some stuff in the low mids might make room for our kick and our snare later. All right, let's take a listen to this vocal sample. We'll get rid of our low end. Got a big spike. Here in our fundamental in our low 
dial back a little. And I want to push up like breathiness. Dial this back a tiny bit as well, and then pull up the high end. Good. All right, let's definitely push this sound a little bit. I want to hear it a temp, and I'm going to pull the presence knob up. We'll OTT that. Have to really clean that up with an EQ. Okay, I think we can push a little reverb on that. And piano. What I'm finding myself doing is kind of finding like the biggest spike on the frequency spectrum of our EQ, making a little dip, nothing too much, like a couple dB, and then on a lot of these instruments that need to be brighter or that are more important, like the piano definitely is in the intro, just giving those a little high-end boost to help them kind of sit in front of some of the other sounds. And then some of the other sounds like this pad that might not be as important can kind of do the opposite with the EQ. And... Reduce some of the high end, reduce some of these high mids. And like pretty much leave that low end alone apart from doing our low cut to get rid of the extra bass. This helps you be able to hear both of those sounds a little more distinctly. Same thing here with our arpeggiator. Push that a little more with some distortion and some OTT. I really oversimplify uh, the mixing of these beats. Because of it, just the fact that we're treating this like a demo recording session. When we get into the advanced one, uh, which is the next unit that's coming up after the end of this video, I definitely have some very, very cool techniques to share that add a lot of complexity to this mixing process. Stay tuned for that. I think we can push that arpeggiator into some reverb as well. All right, so we've pretty much done that for all of our sounds. I just need to split up all of our drums now because we did all of this in a drum rack. Make a couple spare MIDI tracks here. Crank them down so we can all see it together. All right, so we'll move the hi-hat. Hi-hat open, drag that onto a new track. Open. Yeah. Like just uh, two snares. So what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this because we've got some automation here for both our kick and our snares. I'm going to just kill this kick. Uh, one. Two. And then on the kick channel, just delete the snares. Kick and one of the snares. And then other snare on the third snare channel. And so now, even though it looks like we still have all those MIDI notes, it still just plays. The combination of all of those still just makes up one beat. I guess if we wanted to, oh, we just made a little few extra MIDI tracks that we needed. Got some percussion, tambourine, all that good stuff. Let's group all of this up here. Oh, I thought I crashed my Ableton. Trip out. Rev crash, crash. Tom. So let's put the kicks and snares up at the top. And now go through and all of these sound the way we want to sound. 
snare sounds okay. Very well produced drum kits that come with Ableton, so I'm just low end out. Probably fine. Did that for the toms. Crash. Rev crash. Paste that low cut on there. Now let's listen to our bass sounds and decide if we want to do a sub layer or not. So it sounds through the speakers like it's okay, but I'm just going to throw a spectrum on there and take a listen. In and just look at how much our sub is peaking out. But this second sound definitely the sub can still get pushed up a little bit. We're picking it up so much, it seems really absurd. The cobble can just get turned down a little bit. Half. Seems okay. We'll find out here in just a sec. But uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and make us a pink noise track. Go through the plugins, throw that on there. On the master at minus six. All right. Now, I say this every time that I do this if someone's in the studio watching me or whatever. Uh, just apologize in advance. This is a really annoying sound, and we got to do this for all of our sounds to make sure that volume is correct. I'm going to just press Command K or Control K if you're on a Windows, and I'm going to make a keyboard map key to the little button right between my tab and number one key. Uh, and I'm going to put that here on this enable button, and I'm going to put it here on this solo button. And now what should happen. K, control K to turn it back off. Now, what should happen is that every time I press that key, the pink noise will turn on and it will solo that track. So we should be able to go through them one at a time. I'm going to try to blitz through this so that it's as few uh, painful moments as possible. But basically what I'm doing, just to review the last time that we studied pink noise mixing, is I'm using pink noise at minus six decibels to get a volume reference. And I'm going to listen to every sound in isolation with the pink noise and just get the volume to be about the same to where I can hear the pink noise really loud, of course, and kind of also be able to hear the sound that I'm playing in tandem with it. We're going to balance those levels across every track in the whole song and then listen back to it. And it should be very, very balanced in terms of volume level. All right, so the mirror EQ for kick and snare space. Our kicks and snares are a little bit loud. Looking for about minus 10 on the snares and about minus 12 on the kicks. Side chain for our kick and snares just to make sure. I think the snares are probably okay, but we'll just do a quick side chain, all of our bass stuff, and then we got all of our side chain, the kick, and then the sounds we'll do like a little bit of side chaining from the snare as well. So grab a compressor. Pop it open, side chain is on, audio from kick. Here's our kicks coming in, so we'll just pull that threshold down. Helps it cut through a little bit. We'll do the same thing here on our bass channel. 
And then we'll just command D the one that we had on our sounds. And we're just going to change the audio from to snare one. Hit that again. And how it also be from snare two because those are on two different tracks. Awesome. That helps the uh, drums cut through a little bit, which is great. And then the other thing that I would recommend doing is just some stuff that can emphasize your soft and loud sections. I used to do this trick on rock records, on metal records, you name it. I put a utility on the master and then I'll show automation in new lane on the gain. And then each one of these sections, like our intro, our drop, uh, our breakdown, our drop two, each one of them start with something hopefully impactful feeling, especially the drops, definitely impactful. But what we can do to emphasize like the loudness and the impact of that is make the section before it a little quieter. But we don't necessarily want to have like one part of our song be quiet. We can do like a one decibel drop over the course of the whole intro and buildup, starting from zero decibels, moving all the way down here to one decibel. And then at the very start of the drop, we get a one decibel boost on our entire track. And we can leave that loud for the drop and we can drag our selection all the way back to the intro and we can duplicate that through our break section and then on our second drop and then we can copy and paste in across our outro except not have it jump back up that time and then that will help the dynamics of the track we're going to be throwing this thing through a limiter which is going to make it loud in the end anyway so really what we're doing is we're just affecting how hard we're pushing that limiter mirror eq for kick and snare uh, we ended up using sidechain because our kick and snare pattern was so simple and because we had like really, really clean kicks and snares. So I've got this through a limiter, pushing the gain up a little bit on the limiter, increasing the gain with the automation on the utility, did all our saturation, OTT, low cut on everything. Instead of doing a sub layer, we used EQ to match the low end, that sub fundamental frequency of all our bass sounds. Bass place and bass. We could definitely do a little stereo stuff here. Got a delay on our ARP. We could put that delay to the pong delay. Definitely helps. I feel like when it's a ping pong, we can maybe pull the dry wet up a little more. That's pretty cool. Maybe this arpeggiator that we have here on our buildup. Do an auto pan. That one moved from left to right a little bit. And in tandem with the arpeggiator speed increasing, the rate with which it pans from left to right, we could also have that increase. Grab that on the last chord, and maybe we'll just automate it up to somewhere between 6 and 10. Maybe that was a little much. Pull it back down. And maybe we'll pull the amount down to... Like, all right, let's copy that automation over to our first one. I like the sound of that. A little more stereo stuff. Let's see our pad. Like maybe... Put a chorus on that to kind of blur the image and get it out of the center a little bit more. Cool. We took care of all the bass. We've got um, our place in order with all of the delays, verbs that we added. I feel like we have a really good sense of like what physical place the song exists in. I think all that's left to do is just listen to it from the top, make sure we're happy with how everything sounds, bounce it out, and call it a day. Kind of like that the sticks and the shakers are naturally panned in the sample apart from each other a little bit. It already feels quite stereo. Might pull the volume of the djembe back a little bit and the shaker probably too. Thank you. 
little EQ on that third wobble to just even it out a bit. And extend kick and snare pattern here. Have it die out in the second half. Pulling back the volume of a couple things. It's a wobble. I think we're going to need to do something on the second half. Second drop. I think we just need to turn it down. So I'm going to automate the volume here down. Probably like 4 dB. Yes, five maybe. Yeah, just a little softer. All right, let's bounce it. Definitely some more ideas I think are going to come to me in the coming days. But as far as a reference or a demo, this is a pretty good representation of it. Everything is balanced. Everything is like sharp and crisp sounding. The thing that's coming to mind really is that these ambient sections here maybe might sound good with uh, some vocals over them. Hard to say, but for now, uh, we're going to call this a win. Really happy with how this turned out. We were really able to play with the expectation of the genre by going into the dubstep section and then ending with the trap section. Lots of different cool sounds. We were able to layer sounds, quickly duplicate tracks, and change what instrument was on them to layer them. Changing percussion sounds, messing with bass sounds. All in all, I just think this uh, we came a long way in the last couple lessons. But yeah, there you have it. Unit 2 intermediate level one thing we didn't get into yet that we will touch on next was some additional ways that we can promote this song on the internet for free you'll remember from our last project that we talked about bandcamp and soundcloud collecting people's emails or giving someone a free download in exchange for them following you well, we're going to build on those ideas we're also going to build on the music and creative ideas that we've been discussing get into a couple more advanced techniques. Thanks again to Ableton for extending that demo to 90 days so we can all stay productive and creative. Thank you for watching this video and taking this time while you are in quarantine and isolation to upgrade that brain of yours and become more artistic and uh, flex some new creative ideas. Stay productive, stay creative, happy producing, make lots of music. Peace out.